Here we are, folks. Another week, another disastrous performance by Chicago Bears starting quarterback, Caleb Williams. Once again, it, it's every week with um, with the Bears. It's every week with their quarterback, Caleb Williams, that I'm making a new fucking video. And I don't want to have to keep making videos about Caleb Williams, but my hand is sort of being forced every single time because he's playing like complete shit every single time. Now, I'm going to start the video by acknowledging that whatever game plan Chicago may have had was fucking horrible. It sucked. It was a terrible game plan. It clearly didn't work against the Patriots who have an average-ass defense. I'm not saying they're a bad defense, so if you're a Patriots fan, oh, we have one of the best. No, you don't. You don't, have, you don't have one of the best anythings in the league. Um, so don't fucking come at me and say that because that's not true, and you know it's not true. But regardless of that, back on topic, back to the point of the video to begin with. Whatever game plan they had sucked, and their offensive line was terrible. I will admit, it, they, they were playing with backup tackles because um, they have some injuries on the O-line, and it showed because Caleb Williams didn't really have much time to throw, but my point is still going to stand, and it's still going to remain that Caleb Williams cannot deal with pressure. He doesn't know how to read a coverage. He thinks he can get by every play by ad-libbing and running around and holding on to the ball forever, trying to make a miracle play happen every single fucking snap. He has not realized that we're 10 weeks into the NFL season. He still has not figured out that this league does not allow quarterbacks to sit in the pocket and wait forever for something to develop. They will get after the quarterback. This is the National Football League. You are not playing fucking Wyoming. You're not playing San Jose State. You're not playing Arizona or Arizona State. You're not playing these cream puff ass teams. You're playing the real fucking deal. You're in the big leagues now. Caleb Williams, but you're not acting like you're in the big leagues now. You're not playing like an NFL quarterback. And it might have something to do with coaching. It probably does have something to do with how Caleb is being coached. Because it seems like every quarterback that goes to the Bears immediately loses their skills and forgets how to play the position of quarterback in the NFL. And as sad as that is, as sad of a reality that that has been for the Bears over the past however many fucking decades, the Chicago Bears have been an organized professional football team, the National Football League, who plays in the NFC Conference. No matter any of that, the facts are still going to remain that Caleb Williams has not developed his skills. And he's stuck in his college days. He's playing like he's still in college, and that is the main problem. And the main problem with him is holding on to the ball for way too long. And when you hold on to the ball for fucking forever, for God knows how long in the pocket, the pressure is going to get there. And of course, the line is going to be blamed for practically every sack that Caleb Williams, you know, um, took today. I think he took like nine or ten sacks or something like that. It was ridiculous. The guy was under pressure every other play. But it's how you overcome that. It's how you read that pressure, diagnose that pressure. He doesn't know how to diagnose a blitz still. Um, this is something that he said in, a, in a, um, an interview or a press conference or something like that before the season even began, before he took a snap in the regular season at the NFL level. He said he needs to get better at his blitz looks. I think that was um, verbatim, word for word. I think it's something maybe a bit different, but I think I quoted it perfectly word for word there. You can go look that up. He said he was going to work on his blitz looks. He has not worked on that. There's no way. Well, how can you say that and still not have anything down 10 weeks into the season? And I know the NFL is a different ball game, okay? You know, there's different, you know, it's an advanced level of coverage and for, you know, an advanced level of players because they're way different than players in college. Players in college are slower, less explosive, less agile, and, you know, don't really have the abilities of most of, you know, if not all of the NFL players, if we're being honest. That's just me telling the fucking honest to God's truth there, is that college players are vastly and, you know, very inferior to NFL competition. So with that being said, Caleb Williams, once again, has not turned the corner yet. He still has no idea what he's doing. And the other main problem would be accuracy. He is not throwing it on time. He's not throwing it on target. Um, he's The ball placement sucks. Like, he's throwing behind receivers. He's throwing too low. He's throwing too high. It's embarrassing because he was supposed to have such great accuracy coming out of the draft. Oh, he's the most accurate quarterback in the draft. No, he's not. No, he's fucking not. He doesn't look like it, that's for sure. He looks like he's the most inaccurate quarterback in the draft. Did you watch Bo Nix today? And I was shitting on Bo Nix two weeks in the season or three weeks in the goddamn season saying how he sucks and he has a cream puff arm. He basically went down and helped this team almost win the game before. The Chiefs got a lucky-ass block kick because the team is fucking black magic. And who fucking knows? I don't even know what, what, what devil magic the Chiefs have. But Bo Nix 
played practically a perfect game. Yes, he had game manager stats, but he had two touchdowns, 215 yards, high completion percentage, was very efficient and effective with the football. He helped his team. He played a great game. And every Broncos fan would say, even the Bo Nix haters would say, he helped the team win the game, but they couldn't win the game. Caleb Williams hasn't done anything like, like what Bo Nix said today. And Drake May outplayed him. Now, Drake May had a horrible interception where he threw right to the linebacker, but he overcame that. He easily overcame that, and Drake May played okay. He didn't play good, he didn't play great, he didn't play bad. He played a mad game. And honestly, here's my hot take. My hot take is I'd rather take Bryce Young right now over Caleb, Caleb Williams. If I had to win a game, if I had to win one game, you gave me two quarterbacks, Caleb Williams or Bryce Young, I'm picking Bryce Young. <laughs> I'm not trying to say Bryce Young had a good game. He played like a fucking game manager. He played like a high school, but he was doing little dinky fucking throws. And he was missing the wide open players down the field because that's what Bryce Young does. Bryce Young is fucking horrible. But I take Bryce Young in a heartbeat over Caleb Williams because Caleb Williams has not shown any functionality of an NFL starting caliber quarterback. And you can say whatever the fuck you want to say about their offensive line, about the game plan, about the, you know, the coaching, about how they're developing him or attempting to at least develop him. At the end of the day, the quarterbacks got to take responsibility. Caleb Williams needs to take responsibility. He needs to play better because you should not be losing to the cream puff Patriots. The Patriots are one of the worst teams in the league. Their defense is average. It's nothing special. We're not, we're not talking about a Chiefs caliber defense or a Broncos caliber defense or any of those caliber of fucking defenses. We're talking about the Patriots. You can hardly name three players on their defense. Their offense is also one of the worst in the league. So not only do they have an average defense, they have one of the worst offensive, you know, scoring offenses in the NFL. The team can't even score 20 points a fucking game. So you're facing a team that can't beat the Tennessee Titans with a backup quarterback. And you lost them easily, scored three points. And once again, the pressure was coming in. I'm going to acknowledge their offensive line was terrible. But it sounds like I'm regurgitating the same talking points over and over because I've said everything that I really need to say about Caleb Williams. He's just not a very good quarterback. He's not an NFL caliber quarterback. And I want you guys to go back to um, a video that I made. Um, I think it was called the Why Caleb Williams is Going to Be the Next Great NFL Bust. I gave like three or four reasons or five reasons why I believe that Caleb Williams would, would bust in the NFL. One of them was that he was awful under pressure. That couldn't be more right. Like that actually could not be more right. He freezes under pressure. He does not throw the ball under pressure. He stands in the pocket and he freezes and he takes sacks because he can't read pressure. Why else would that be happening? Oh no, the rush gets in so quick that he can't. No, he has one and a half or two seconds to throw under pressure because that's how a blitz works. A blitz is supposed to get in under two or three seconds, which means you you, have, you force the quarterback into making a quick decision. So you you know you don't you know give up a really big play unless there's a busted coverage, you know in man coverage down the field. That's the point of a blitz. You get the you get the quarterback to throw it really quick, a short pass, so they don't get a big game. That's what a fucking blitz is for. And Caleb Williams does not know how to read those. He doesn't know how to slide his line over. He doesn't hit his hot read. He never hit his hot read in college. So why do you think he's going to hit his hot read in the pros? That's not something that you can develop. You can't all of a sudden teach a guy how to read a coverage or how to, how to make adjustments on the fly. That's not something that's coachable. I'm sorry to tell you the truth, but you can't coach that in a player. If a player has it, he has it. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Caleb Williams, in this instance, does not have that ability. And he never will have that ability. And you could go on and on about how the Bears ruin quarterbacks. You could go on and on about how everything sucks and the Bears are garbage. Because, yes, they are fucking horrible. They are 4-5. and five. They are not close to a playoff position. They're not going to be any, any, any close to a playoff position. But I want all the Bears fans who thought that Caleb Williams was going to be generational to, to comment. And I want reasons why you guys thought he was going to be generational. Did you watch the games? Did you actually watch USC film? Because if you did... And, you know, you're not completely fucking biased or stupid. Um, you would have realized that this is a guy who has no, you know, really no big time traits other than arm talent and athleticism and improvisation ability. He has great improvisation skills. But against the NFL players, it doesn't look so good because now you're playing against a whole different caliber of fucking players. And that's all I got to say about Caleb Williams. This guy is horrendous. He sucks. And he should be benched. He's not a he's not even he's not a starting caliber quarterback. There's thir there's probably 40 quarterbacks I would pick over Caleb Williams, if we're being honest. He was fucking atrocious against one of the league's worst teams today. Thank you all for watching. This has been Mr. Truth, and this was nothing but the truth.